Pipejacking and microtunneling are becoming increasingly important for the installation of new pipelines, as well as the renovation of existing pipelines. The ability to change from slurry to mix shield mode during continuous operation means that it's possible to tunnel in a wide range of geological conditions and non-homogeneous materials. In the computer simulation that follows, you will see the technical requirements from the planning phase through to completion of the pipeline. A pipeline with a diameter of 2 meters will be driven from the launch shaft to a target shaft 500 meters away. The advantages of the pipejacking and microtunneling process in contrast to conventional methods in a construction project of this nature are as follows. Drastically reduction in the movement of excavated soil minimizes costs. It's an environmentally friendly method that causes minimum disturbance along the construction route other than at the working shafts. Lowering of the groundwater level is avoided, thus preventing dangerous settlements of building foundations and road surfaces. There is virtually no disruption of the flow of traffic, apart from a slight disruption in the area of the job site. Traffic continues to flow without hindrance, highlighting the advantage of the conventional of pipe laying in urban city areas. Last but not least, construction work is not influenced by the weather, resulting in more rapid completion and deadlines being met. In order to determine the geological conditions, boreholes are normally made along the planned route. As an example, we will now examine the borehole at the point of the tunnel with the least cover. The construction site at the start shaft is secured with a coarse gravel and compacted to take the loads imposed by the crane, etc. Then the start shaft is constructed, in this case using the sheet piling method. It's also possible to construct the start and target shaft by other methods using, for example, precast concrete segments, in situ concrete shafts, etc. The start shaft must be adapted to the requirements and strengthened, if necessary, to be able to withstand the jacking forces. The product pipes are normally delivered by truck and stored at the site. Dependent upon the availability of space, a pipe stock is established and maintained as necessary. The tunneling machine is delivered to the site in separate modules for easy handling. The container with the operator control panel and the hydraulic power pack for the jacking station is located in front of the start shaft, such that the machine operator has eye contact with the jacking station. A separation plan is used to separate the excavated material transported from the tunnel face by the slurry system. Bentonite suspension is used to support the working face and to convey the excavated material to the surface. After separation, the bentonite suspension is then recalculated to the tunnel face. A further bentonite pump is using to supply lubrication around the outside of the jacking pipes. The speed-controlled slurry feed pump conveys the regenerated bentonite suspension from the separation plant to the cutter head. A speed-controlled slurry discharge pump is installed in the return side of the circuit. In order to prevent cavitation, it's set up in the start shaft and also connected in the separation container. The hydraulically powered main jacking station is installed in the start shaft. The thrust ring ensures that there is an even transfer of force from the four hydraulic cylinders. A concrete block cast in the rear of the start shaft absorbs the forces created by the thrust cylinders. The cutter head and the first machine pipe are assembled and can now be lowered into the start shaft by the side crane. The jacking station can generate a thrust force of up to 1400 tons on the pipeline slide rails, provide precise positioning of the machine sections and the subsequent jacking pipes. A launch seal is necessary in order to ensure a watertight seal around the pipe and prevent the leakage of slurry and bentonite lubrication into the shaft. Normally, a low-strength concrete block is cast against the sheet pile wall at the exit point. The launch seal assembly is installed at this point by bolting to the concrete block. 
Next, the cutter head and the first machine pipe, complete with the drive unit and steering cylinders, are lowered and positioned in front of the launch seal. The second machine pipe is lowered and connected to the first machine pipe. The feed and slurry discharge lines are connected. The tunneling machine now carefully cuts through the low strength concrete block. After the last machine sections have been installed, the tunneling machine is complete and is now ready for the pipe jacking operation to commence. The cutter wheel and tools are adapted to the expected geological conditions. The crusher chamber is located directly behind the cutting wheel. The reinforced spokes of the wheel act as a grinding mechanism on the same principle as a coffee grinder. The larger rocks are reduced in size until they can pass through the opening of the screen for transport in the slurry circuit. The slurry discharge pipeline, shown in green, transports the excavated soil together with the bentonite suspension. During operation in hard rock or cohesive soil, the slurry circulation is leaded through the cutterhead nozzles. In sandy soil, the slurry circulation is leaded through the annulus nozzles located behind the crusher cone in the excavation chamber. The steering cylinders are situated in the first machine pipe and are used to adjust the direction of cutter head with millimeter precision, thus making it possible to correct the line and level. In addition, a laser target is located in this machine pipe for determining of the position of the machine. Power for the steering cylinders and cutting wheel drive are provided by the hydraulic power pack. The feed and slurry lines are equipped with the compensators to block vibration movements and to realize a length compensation. The slurry feed and discharge lines pass through the entire machine and along the tunnel to the separation plant. The material transport system is a closed system. The blue lines feed the bentonite suspension to the excavation chamber and the green discharge line transports the bentonite suspension and excavated material to the separation plant where it's separated via vibrating screens and hydrocyclones. The position of the tunneling machine is monitored with the assistance of a laser-supported measurement system. For level routes and lengths of up to 300 meters, an electronic laser system, ELS, is deployed. In this case, the laser is located in the start shaft and the target in the machine. The point at which the laser beam meets the laser target is determined electronically and is transferred via a data cable to the evaluation computer in the control panel. There. The measurement data is shown on the monitor in graphical and numerical format. Presentation of the spatial position of the machine is made by means of a white crosshair and a red crosshair, that is, position of the machine in cutter head level. The set value of the machine position is shown by means of a fixed crosshair. During tunneling, the friction forces around the outside of the jacking pipes have to be kept as low as possible. The normal method of doing this is to lubricate the annulus around the jacking pipes by injecting bentonite. Every third to fifth jacking pipe is equipped with a bentonite lubrication station. These pipes each have three injection points that are connected to the bentonite lines. The solenoid operated valve at each point enables controlled metered injection. The bentonite is injected with light pressure into the annular gap between the pipe and the ground and spreads over the surface of the pipe. It permeates the surrounding soil providing a considerable reduction in friction. A further measure aimed at keeping the jacking forces of the tunnel under construction at an acceptable level is the deployment of additional jacking station. The so-called intermediate jacking station consists of a steel shell with the hydraulic cylinders installed.
For demonstration purposes, an intermediate jacking station located directly behind the main jacking station is used here to clarify the principle. In reality, an intermediate jacking station would be deployed at a distance of roughly 100 to 150 meters behind the tunneling machine. The jacking force of the main jacking station is then only effective of up to first intermediate jacking station. When the main jacks are extended, those in the intermediate jacking station are retracted. Afterwards, the main jack is locked in its position and then serves as a thrust block. The intermediate jacking station braces against the section of the pipeline behind it and pushes the part in front of it further forwards. Loadings along the pipeline are thus maintained at minimum levels. In this way, a number of intermediate jacking stations situated one behind the other make even long-distance tunneling possible. With the aid of bentonite lubrication and intermediate jacking stations, the whole route can be advanced without intermediate shafts. In the target shaft, the machine is dissembled and removed. After completion of pipe jacking, the manholes are finished and the new pipeline can go into operation. Throughout the world, pipe jacking and microtunneling are becoming increasingly important for the installation of new service pipes and sewer pipes. The advantages of the pipe jacking and microtunneling process are evident, especially in urban city areas. Pipe jacking causes minimum disturbance along the construction route, so there's virtually no disruption to the flow of traffic or any impact to the local economy. In contrast to conventional methods in such construction projects, pipe jacking and microtunneling has an environmentally friendly method and helps to conserve protected landscape areas. The following animation shows the installation of new sewer pipes DN600 in an urban crossroad with dense traffic. The whole construction site can be located in a way that only one lane is blocked. In our example, 150 meters of sewer pipe are to be jacked from the launch shaft to the reception shaft. At the first stage, the area around the starting shaft is cordoned off to divert the traffic. Due to the compact design of the machine and the small diameter of the starting shaft, there will only be minor disruption to the traffic flow. In this case, the starting shaft consists of a round shaft of reinforced concrete with an inner diameter of 3.2 meters. The compact jacking frame is then placed into the starting shaft and the slurry discharge pump is mounted on a platform adjacent to the jacking frame. The operating container with the control panel and the hydraulic power pack is located on the top rear side of the shaft. A pipe stock is then established and maintained in front of the shaft to feed the shaft crane. The slurry feed pump and the slurry discharge pump are connected between the shaft and the control container and then connected through the separation plant to form a closed slurry circuit. The AVN 600 machine consists of several segments. A sleeve shaft with three bolt holes connects the cutting wheel with the drive unit. Fresh water is then pumped from the slurry tank and centrally pushed through the machine to pick up the excavated material. The mixed slurry is then picked up by the discharge pump and transported to the separation plant on the surface. The conical crusher situated in front has reinforced cutting bars and is provided with nozzles to inject the fresh water. The drive shaft, which is connected to the cutting wheel, is driven by hydraulic motors. The sleeve shaft lies in a tapered roller bearing. Three hydraulic motors transmit the rotation via the gear rim to the sleeve shaft and the cutting wheel. The three steering cylinders enable the operator to correct the direction of the tunnel boring machine as well as control the alignment of the machine in curved drives. Therefore, the position of the cutter head is continuously updated with the help of the laser guidance system. To ensure AVN 600 has a smooth method of excavation, the machine has two integrated water circuits. The standard water circuit supplies fresh water to the analyst via five hoses fixed to the inner side of the bulkhead. 
several boreholes branch off from the annulus, which supply the chamber situated behind the conical crusher. The fresh water is continuously pumped through the conical crusher chamber and sucked off through the boreholes of the sleeve shaft and transported back to the surface with the shaft slurry pump up to the separation plant. A second hose supplies the high-pressure nozzles used in the conical